even if you're a very heavy Flatpak user, Flathub's website isn't something you need every single day. But on those occasions when you need it, it's nice to know the site has been well designed and gives you everything you need. But for a while now, there has been a rework in the works. That was deployed on beta.flathub.org. But just a few days ago, that redesign has now been deployed on the main live site. And honestly, I think it looks pretty good. Now we have talked about it on this channel before, but since the last time I talked about it, some additional things have changed, so it seems like as good a time as any to go and basically discuss the rework. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the lack of your retinas melting. It's not the darkest of all possible dark themes, but it's still a really good middle ground where you can have a dark theme, but it's not breaking the really, really dark logos. Like when you have a theme that is really close to black, there are a lot of logos that are also black, like this chess logo, and those tend to just blend in with the background and don't really look that great. There are still some that look a little bit off like this micro text editor logo, but you're always going to have certain icons here and there that are going to cause issues. But for the most part, it's good. Now, the second thing you're going to notice is the change in how applications are shown on the homepage. Previously, only a single line of applications was shown for each category, and also the categories were in a completely different order. So originally, it was editor's choice, recently updated, new apps, popular, and that was it. Now, it's new apps, recently updated, verified, and then popular, and editor's choice no longer exists. And I don't know how you guys felt about it, but judging by the fact that it's no longer here, I'm guessing the Flathub developers weren't exactly a fan either. I always thought it was a really weird category that didn't make any sense. Like, what was the criteria? Who was the editor? Why are these apps here? It seemed like just a complete random selection of apps with no rhyme or reason. It wasn't trying to highlight new apps, highlight popular apps, highlight this, highlight that. It was just random. At least that's the way it felt to me. Now, as for new being at the top, I think it's a good choice, but I think there were multiple good choices. New being at the top is a great way to advertise new projects that are suddenly on the platform. If you didn't know how to flat pack, now you do. But you can make a pretty good argument for popular as well. If you're coming to the Flat Hub website, you're probably looking for one of the popular apps because they're popular. So it's more likely that's one of the things you need. So it tells you that it's actually going to be here. But also, you can make a good argument for recently updated. This will give you a reminder to actually go and do an update to make sure you have the most up-to-date version. Now, as for verified, this is a completely new section, and honestly, I think really cool. So, like many of the packaging solutions on Linux, a lot of things are going to be packaged by a third-party developer. And there is nothing wrong with this. It allows things that otherwise wouldn't be packaged to actually be available. Let's say, for example, the Dolphin emulator or RPCS3 or any other application you want to find that is made by a third-party developer. But sometimes an application is packaged by the developer of the application. Say, for example, with GIMP or with something like break time or anything else in this list. So a verified application is when it has been verified the developer of the flat pack is the same person, organization, or in some way officially affiliated with the project. And besides being in the verified section, there is no special treatment given to applications which have been marked as verified. Basically, it just gives you a, another indication that you can trust this flat pack because this is officially coming from the developers of that project. And if something goes wrong with that flat pack, you know exactly who to report it to. If something goes wrong with the OBS flat pack, you know this being maintained by the OBS team, so they are the ones who need to fix it. Now, while the end result isn't really that different, there isn't just one kind of verification. The first kind of verification is called website verification, used by things like Telegram here. 
And when you do this, it'll include the name of the website on the actual page. Now, the way this works is when you want to verify a project, you'll be given basically a token to include on the website. If you include that token and then tell Flathub the website the token is on, if that token can be found there, then it's clear that the person making the flat pack and the person running the website know who each other are and this is an official project. Now the second kind of verification is called repo verification. This is a little bit simpler. Say for example with chess comp stomp with hacks by DT Sudo on GitHub. If the repo for the flat pack and the repo for the project are either the same repo or exist on the same account, clearly it's made by the same person. Now this can be expanded out to organizations and things like that as well. And it doesn't just work on GitHub, it'll also work on GitLab as well, along with the KDE and GNOME GitLabs. But speaking of GNOME and KDE's GitLab, there is a special kind of verification, which is still repo verification, it's just a slightly different marker. Say for example with Ariana, this doesn't say by some developer on the KDE GitLab, it just says KDE. This is because it's marked as an official part of the KDE project. And the same happens with GNOME things as well, like... This one right here. This says verified by GNOME on GNOME GitLab. There isn't this special treatment for any other projects right now, but I could see it happen sometime in the future. Just supporting KDE and GNOME makes sense because, you know, they're the biggest ones. Now, the final kind of verification is not going to be available for the vast majority of projects. This is manual verification. This is when one of the Flathub moderators goes and manually marks something as verified. Basically, this is just a stopgap for those projects which are really popular like Firefox, like RetroArch, and anything else where the Flathub moderators realize that it probably should be verified, but for one reason or another, the developers of the project haven't actually gone and verified it. In the case of manually verified projects, it will just say verified and then say has been manually verified by the Flathub team. And unlike certain platforms, you cannot pay for verification. These are your only verification methods. And they don't really have any different meaning to one another. They're all still verified in one way or another. It's just different ways of doing it. Now, assuming you actually have a flat pack published, which you can find out how to do with this helpful button right at the top of the page. If you want to get that flat pack verified, what you need to do is firstly log into Flathub. This can be done with your GitHub, GitLab, GNOME GitLab, or KDE GitLab, and more things will probably happen into the future. And make sure the account you log into is the account that actually has the flat pack available. And then in the developer section, there is going to be a list of applications that are available connected to that account. And then you can choose to verify one of them, going through the process you want to use. And assuming you can verify it, it will then be verified. Now, so far, we've pretty much just looked at the home page, but the application pages have had a lot of changes as well. Let's check out Firefox here, and we'll go to Firefox over here as well. And Firefox on the original site, you know, it had all of the information you need it to have. You have the install button here, you have like the website button, donate, all this fun stuff, some additional information, and then how to install it with Flatpak. Now, it looks like this. At the start, it's still pretty much the same. You have your images, and then down here, all of this extra stuff that was not here before, and then how to install it. This, I think, is the coolest new addition. I always like having little bit of analytics here and there that are not, you know, you know, spying on the users, just a very simple download count so you have an indication of what's actually going on. I don't know why there was a spike here. My guess is maybe there were, like, undercounting here and then overcounting here or maybe the site was like half deployed or something if anyone who's involved in flat hub happens to know what happened here because it happened on chrome as well i would love to know now some of the stuff has just been moved around like the donate button is now no longer further down the page it's just right at the top which 
I think is a much better spot for it. And then things like the licenses are still here, but then there's additional things like the installed size and download side, which I absolutely think should have just been there from the start. You can easily see it from the Flatpak application, but knowing it on the website is really nice. And then these additional things which can be customized by the individual project, like the project website, the help page, contributor translations, and if we go to something else like, um... Uh, this one here, Memento, it's going to have its project website and we'll find something else. Let's find one that's actually official, like Lutris. Lutris is going to have the project website, the help page, the FAQ, contribute translations and things like that. So they can pick and choose what they want and, and any additional things that might make sense to be here. Plus, the flat pack change log is actually visible now. The problem is because there wasn't really a convenient way to see the changelog before, um, nobody includes the changelog. I found one project that does, that being KDE Itinerary. Maybe there are others, there probably are, but none of the major projects do. If we just grab something like, let's just grab the top three. Obviously, Chrome not being official probably won't. Let's even grab more. So here we go. Chrome does not. Firefox does not. Retroarch does... Uh, yes, Retroarch does. And Dolphin does not. So don't expect to see it being used. But maybe now that it's easy to find, it will be. And we can't forget this one. There's also the group section. This will group applications together based on how they are related. So in this case, they are all in the KDE group. If we go to a GNOME application, these are going to be in the GNOME group. I should have just grabbed a link. Here we go, all in the GNOME group. And other applications might be grouped in various other ways. Also, some applications aren't going to be in a group Instead, they're going to be marked as by the same developer, like Jellyfin MPV Shim and Jellyfin Media Player. And one final quick note, the button on the homepage, which previously said Quick Setup, now instead says Setup Flat Hub. This is a much more descriptive button and tells you what you're actually setting up. This doesn't really give you any indication. Are you setting up use of flat packs, setting up use of flat hub, something else entirely? Why is it quick setup? I like this, keep it like this, maybe change the setup flat pack, but this works as well. Whilst a rework of the Flathub website is by no means the most important thing in the world, or even just the most important thing for Flatpaks, it's good to see that all that work that was being done on the Flathub beta website has now been shifted into live and didn't just all go to waste. Finally, people visiting the site can actually see it. Now we can move on towards other things which need a bit more attention, like the uh, optional paid apps, because that's a work in progress, and that is really difficult to set up. But that's going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like flat packs? Do you like snaps? Do you even know what a container is? Do you know why you watch this video or what day of the week it is? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of... These amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly burrow pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.